<laughs> During the American Civil War, Johnny Reb and Billy Yank received their cartridges in bundles wrapped in paper. Well, they look something like this. That's a Confederate and that's a US Army version. Well, both had 10 cartridges. Both were wrapped in paper and both had beautiful labels. And they were also holding the percussion caps for the rifles. I was always in love with these labels, so I decided to replicate them. So I made and designed rubber stamps, rubber printing plates for this stuff. But uh, before I show you how to make your own bundles, let's check the history of these cartridge wrappers, because that's quite an interesting story. Probably the first American document to fully describe the way of rolling rifle cartridges and bundling them was a manual titled Military Pyrotechnic for the Use of the Cadets of the United States Military Academy, West Point, dated 1832. This manual clearly shows how the wrapping paper was placed in the folding box and how the 10 paper cartridges were placed on the wrapper with balls alternating by tier and by rows. The manual did not give any info on how to mark the bundles, so probably they could be differentiated only by size or by the packing wood box. The Ordnance Manual of 1841 gave a more precise description of the bundles, giving the exact sizes for the packages. It also described the construction method for the folding box. The distance between the sides was to be 5 times the ball diameter and the height 2 times the ball diameter. With the introduction of the model 1855 rifle musket and this new cartridge holding 60 grains of musket powder and a 500 grain Burton mini A ball, new information was added on how to make these bundles. These graphic plates were designed by the Frankfurt Arsenal in 1857 and five arsenals of construction received these plates for further use. They were Washington, St. Louis, Benicia, Watervliet and Allegheny. The first known graphics are associated with the Allegheny Arsenal and it is dated 1858. According to the Ordnance Manual, the wrapping paper was waterproof by immersing it into molten mix of beeswax, linseed oil and spirits of turpentine. The bundles had to be strong enough to protect the fragile cartridges against the challenges of weather and rough handling. The method of rolling cartridges was simplified in the second year of the war by the US Ordnance Department. Only two, instead of three, trapezoid sheets were necessary for the cartridge holding a 500 grain 0.5775 inch grease groove Burton mini A ball and 60 grains of musket powder. These US made bullets were mainly present on steam powered machines and were sized close to the bore diameter. They were supposed to be loaded naked. They were much more consistent than what the Confederate Army had. When the Civil War began, the only arsenal on southern ground to produce small arms cartridges was Baton Rouge, so the US military logistics was in much better position. The 1861 Ordnance Manual added new information to the details of the cartridge bundles. First, it finally mentioned the proper size of wrapping papers for all the cartridges in service. Second, it introduced color codes to differentiate the various cartridge packs. These paper sheets were waterproofed, exactly the same way as it was described in the previous Ordnance Manual, and they had to be large enough to accept 10 cartridges and the 11s, which was percussion caps, rolled in a paper tube. This is how the Ordnance Manual described how to make the case for the caps. Cases for percussion caps. These are rolled on a former 0.54 inch in diameter, choked at one end and tied. 12 caps are put in and the case is closed by twisting the open end of the case. The percussion cap was a parallel invention by several firearms makers. However, its American story is connected to Joshua Shaw, who patented it in the New World in 1822. The first US military tests of the new ignition system were immediately started with converting holes to breech loading rifles. The US government did not pay for the rights for using Shaw's patent. The first US rifle to use their ignition system was the Norse Hall breech loader produced from 1833. Finally, in 1844, after long arguments with the government, Shaw received a fee of 18,000 US dollars for using his percussion cap system.
According to the Ordnance Manual of 1861, the bundling was done this way. Or rubber printing stamps for the Arsenal bundle labels are based on graphics redrawn from original pieces. They are easy to use and they make a beautiful companion to all firearms from the Civil War time. We make the rubber plates that you have to attach to a smooth wood block with double-sided tape. The ink we are recommending is the same cheap stuff that is used for any commercial rubber stamps. With just a little practice you will be able to make perfect labels. The size of the wrapper for the standard 58 caliber bundle is 9 by 6.5 inches. So now we are ready for bundling with 10 cartridges and the tube holding the 12 caps. According to the Ordnance Manual of 1861, the bundling was done the following way. Put a wrapper in the box, the long side perpendicular to the edge of the table, the middle of the paper in the middle of the box. Place parallel to the size of the box two tiers of cartridge of five each, the balls alternating. Bring the short ends of the paper together and fold them twice close down on the cartridges. Insert the package of caps in the end of the bundle, next to the ends of the lower tier. Fold the wrapper on the ends and tie the bundle. First in the direction of the length, then its breadth, with the twine fastened in a single bow knot. The wrappers are of different colors to distinguish the cartridges for the different arms. But these color codes were not really used. According to the Ordnance Manual of 1861, the 69 caliber and 58 caliber traditional rifle musket cartridges holding an expanding bulb should be wrapped in ordinary color paper. Red paper should be used for the rifle muskets for the cadets, also 58 caliber but with a lighter charge, and also for the 69 caliber buckshot cartridges. And green paper should be used for the 69 caliber ball cartridges. But as these color codes were not really used, the only valuable information to differentiate the cartridge bundles from each other was the cartridge label itself. As the Civil War broke out, large number of cartridge manufacturers were involved into ammunition production that multiplied the number of graphics on wrappers. Nearly all arsenals and private contractors design their own graphics. If you are looking for the most authentic color for these cartridge bundles, then check the websites of different auction houses on the internet. They have excellent images about cartridge bundles straight from the American Civil War, and using these images you can really find out of different packaging papers exactly the texture and the color that you need. The Confederate Army was in a really difficult situation because there was a great variation in the bullets that they were using. They were making cast or pressed bullets, nearly all arsenal had its own weight, diameter, which means it was a great variety of bullets that were actually serving on the battlefields in the hands of the Confederate soldiers. And they also had two kind of cartridges. First they had the American cartridge holding a grease groove 500 grain Burton mini -A bullet that had to be loaded naked without the paper patching. And then they had the British, cons British construction cartridges with the Pritchett ball that had to be loaded with the paper patching. And also in the British cartridges the bullet is in reverse position. So that's a difficult situation. Regarding military material, the Confederacy had to rely on import from Europe. The US plan called Anaconda, suggested by Winfield Scott, was developed to build a blockade on southern ports to prevent supplies coming in. Domestic production of small arms ammo was limited, so blockade runners played a vital part in keeping the war alive. They delivered large number of Enfield cartridges from British manufacturers like Ely Brothers, Ludlow Brothers and Curtis and Harvey. 
The construction of the British cartridges differed a lot from the US cartridges. They held a smooth-sided, heavily undersized Pritchett ball with a boxwood or clay plug in the skirt. They were shipped with two different bullet diameters, 0.568 inches for the older and 0.55 inches for the newer cartridges. The Confederacy had a wheel to standardize its ammo supply to simplify logistics. Finally, they settled for the British construction method, but with a projectile of 0.562 inches diameter and a powder load of 75 grains of musket powder. Another problem with the British made Enfield cartridges was that they did not fit into the standard 58 caliber cartridge box. They had to be repacked shorter, or the soldiers had to be issued the larger 69 caliber cartridge boxes. Cartridge paper was also a logistics nightmare. The Confederacy had its paper mills, but they never had enough capacity. The CS Army had to rely on import again, while the Enfield style cartridges were really sensitive to the quality of the paper patching. These Enfield cartridges also used more paper than the two sheet American cartridges, so it really did not ease the problem. The Confederacy had to keep on using both American and British made cartridges. This was the reason why manufacturers like Ely Brothers added a small note to each cartridge bundle telling the proper way to load the British made cartridges. This confusion was also fed by the official documents of the CS Army. Small arms ammo making was described in the Ordnance Manual, in the Field Manual for the use of the officers of the Ordnance Duty, and in the rules to be observed in the laboratories of the CS Arsenal and Ordnance Depots. It's interesting that the Ordnance Manual still described the standard American cartridge with a 0.5775 bullet with 60 grains of musket powder, while the other two documents already described the new British style cartridge. In the later years of the war, the Confederate cartridge bundle was also different from the US version. First of all, according to their central regulation, not just the year but also the months of production had to be marked on the labor. Second, they held 13 percussion caps instead of 12. The Confederacy was always struggling with logistics, so if percussion caps were not available but cartridges were still bundled, then all the bundles had to be marked with the words without caps. We are quite lucky because the oldest working printing shop of my country is located quite close to my log cabin in the mountains, so I decided to pay them a visit to show you how exactly these cartridge wrappers were made in the 19th century. So this is where the whole process starts. Uh, these are containing, this uh, cabinet is containing the letters. This is a, this is a, a system. In each little compartment you have different characters. This table shows here exactly which letter is in which compartment. 
Gutenberg úr hagyott ránk egy ilyen szerszámot, amit úgy hívnak, hogy Winkel. This little device called Winkel was designed by Gutenberg himself. Vagy sorszedő vas. Or whatever, I don't think I can translate it. A Winkel jó. Egy. Tehát ez a csúszka, ez azt ezzel lehet beállítani a szövegoszlót szélességét. This little slide here, this is setting the, the distance of the, of, the, of the row. Le lehet rögzíteni. This can be fixed. Ki lehet szedni egy sor, vagy ki lehet can, szedni egy szakaszt is. There you can put one line, but you can also put several lines, one paragraph. Viszont ha szakaszt szedünk, akkor egy ilyen spárgával If you are working with a paragraph, then we use a little row. Körbe kell kötni, tesznek rá egy csomót. Mm-hmm. To tie the letters around, put a knot on the end. Hogy még kikerül a keretbe, szét ne hújjonak a betűk. So it will not, it will not uh, fall apart if you take okay. it out from this little frame. Az ólom betűkről annyit kell tudni, hogy tényleg ólomból vannak. These letters are made of lead. Kétfajta ötvözőanyagot anyagot használnak hozzá az ónt és az antimon. It is hardened by antimony and tin. Úgy kell elhelyezni a betűket a vénkelbe, uh-huh. hogy a pozíció így legyen, hogy felül legyen a betű. Uh-huh. So the letter is upside, of course. És hogyha tükör irányba kiszedjük a sor, akkor nyomtatás után olvashatóval válik a szöveg. And of course everything is done in mirror, which means that uh, when you uh, actually use the press, it will be a positive uh, form and you can read it. So this is only for making the first print. They set everything here, and uh, it is for verifying if the if if all the letters are in right position and no letters are missing, and the layout is okay. This this machine was made in 1820 in Leipzig, Germany. Which you have a Gutenberg press, which I told. That's a Gutenberg press, as it is called. Okay. So now we are adding the ink. The first one, the ink of the Hessian festiget. Három centire. A körülbelül közepére is. Jó, oké. Okay. Jó. Körülbelül is. Csak rá kell egyet, majd erre közöttem. Oké. Megfogjuk ezt a kárhozit. Most egy de a hang a prés alatt. Now it's just moving under the press. Ez a prés. That's the press handle. Pillanat. Itt a, a hanger, és a, ez a két hanger eltolódása, tehát a függőlegestől, ha kihúzzuk, azok párhuzamosan vesznek, húzzuk ki. So when we are pulling this lever, these two cylinders will be uh, parallel to each other Úgy and completely vertical. And it goes down one centimeter. És most van párhuzamosan. És most akkor jó. Most akkor jó. And now it's okay. So és ha visszahúzzuk, akkor viszont eltolódik a két. Ah, igen, igen, ilyenkor meg felemeli akkor. Így így van. Van. Visszahajtjuk. Now we crank it out. Jó? Gyerekezőnök. Jobb két bal kéz, a két felső sarok. Lassan felemeljük és előtt tesszük a... Ja, lassan. Majd a tesszük, ahol a hosszú katinkának az aranyére van. <gül> That's how it was made. Oké. Okay. So this is how the cartridge wrappers were born, ladies and gentlemen. And now we have around 25 types in our eBay store and also in our web shop for you. Available for cheap money. And also they are very easy to use and they make a perfect companion for cap and ball cartridge formers, percussion revolver cartridge formers at cartridge boxes and also for the US Arsenal stadiums. That's the same era. Their number will keep increasing as I'm redrawing in vector graphics all the new stuff as well, which means that you are going to find your 
or label stamp for the 69 caliber, 58 caliber or 54 caliber guns, regardless whether it's a breech loader or muzzle loader. So ladies and gentlemen, before I leave, I will shoot my original Springfield rifle musket to 300 meters because I have some spare cartridges left and we are never taking home any ammo from the range. And after that, I can say, stay cool and keep your powder dry. My original rifle for the job is my model 1863 Springfield Rifle Musket manufactured in Bridesburg, Pennsylvania by Alfred Jenks and Son. This company made altogether 79,000 pieces for the Union in three different contracts. The rifle shares the characteristics of the standard US rifle muskets. 14-inch barrel, three shallow grooves with progressive depth and a one turn in 72 inches twist rate. I size my bullets to exact bore diameter. Let's ring that gong at 300 meters. And it looks tiny, tiny, tiny from this distance. My lube recipe is my traditional soft mini lube mixed from eight parts of tallow, two parts of beeswax and a small quantity of synthetic engine oil. Let's check it if I can do it three times out of three shots. And it's a 160 years old rifle, ladies and gentlemen. Straight out from the American Civil War and still shoots very, very straight. <laughs>